Hello and welcome in to Oxford, Ohio. Shotgun start here for game two between the Kent State Golden Flashes and the Miami Red Hawks. And Kent Egbert's getting ready to throw the first pitch here in game two. It's in there for a called strike. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor live here on Chatterbox Sports. Bear with us as we break through this first inning. We got the starting lineups just a minute ago, which is why we had that shotgun start. But we're ready to rock here as the Red Hawks change uniforms into the red top, still have the white pinstripes, and leading off for Kent State will be Kyle Jackson. So Egbert, who has worked his way into the weekend rotation, will be facing off against Kyle Jackson. First pitch was here at 314. Typically, they play one game a day, a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday game. Today, they are playing a doubleheader because of yesterday's rain out. Oh, one two's the count here to Kyle Jackson. And Egbert tries the breaking ball that misses on the inside. Egbert, a 3.83 ERA, a six start of the season, a three and two record. He's thrown 44 and two thirds innings pitch, has struck out 53, has only walked 14 batters. Misses upstairs to run the count full. So the payoff pitch to begin game two here against Kyle Jackson. Egbert, high leg kick. In there for a called strike three. And game two starts for the Miami pitchers just as game one was. A lot of strikeouts. Now the center fielder for the Flashes, number 13, Colin Matthews. Colin Matthews steps to the plate. Had a pair of hits in game one, including that double down the third baseline. He came around and scored, so looking to keep it going. And he's first pitch swinging and hammers out to left field. Given Chase looking up and making an extension of a grab is the left fielder Brian Zapp coasting along around the warning track. The ball got caught up in the wind. He leaped up and made the play. The what a Number snag six, by Justin Brian Davis. Zapp. As we're still settling in, Zapp already with the web gym. Oh one one here to Justin McNiss. Swing strike, it's Kent Egbert ahead of the count. Egbert, high leg kick, can't get McNiss to chase. The one, two. Called strike three on the outside edge. Beautiful pitch from Egbert and a breezy top half of the first inning. We head to the bottom of the first here at McKee Field on Love and Honor Live. Bottom of the first here 
in Oxford, Ohio. Joe Whitman, the South Ball, taking the mound for Kent State. Let's take you through Miami's starting lineup. Won't have a graphic for you, but I can take you through it all the same. Benji Brokman will start out in right field. Cooper Weiss will be batting in the two hole. He'll be playing shortstop. David Novak, the designated hitter, will be batting in the three hole. Ryland Zabarowski will be cleaning up. He's playing first base. Dylan Baker out at second. He's moved all the way up to the five hole. Evan Applewick at the sixth slot. He's playing third. Brian Zapp, who just had a web gym out in left field, he'll be batting seventh today. Zach McDonald will be in center field in the eight hole, and Tommy Harrison, the freshman, the will be behind the dish. The of the first, it's the right fielder, number 11, Benji Brokman. So about Joe Whitman. Joe Whitman comes in. This is his 10th start to the season, a 3.00 ERA, a whip of 1.20. He's got a 5-1 and one record, 45 innings pitched. He struck out 61. He's walked 16. So similar strikeout numbers then to Crookshank, who we saw last game, but without the free passes. And you saw the heat on that first pitch to Benji Brokman. 93 on the gun. Whitman is bringing it. The junior from Hudson, Ohio, 6 foot 3, 185 pounds. Most recently went five innings in which he gave up zero earned runs against Akron. So doesn't walk a lot of batters, but doesn't go deep into ball games, and that's because he gets deep counts, and that's part of the M.O. for Miami today against Whitman is to make him throw a lot of pitches. Benji Brokman chokes up as he's going to have a 2-2 against Whitman. This is upstairs, 94 from Whitman, so a lot of heat. Brookman did a good job as being a leadoff hitter, getting on base quite a lot. And as he does right there, takes ball four as that pitch misses below the zone. Defensively, Kent State will line up very similar. Mickness will be in the battery with Whitman. Over on the left side of the infield will be Kyle Jackson at the hot corner, McNamara at short. Mac Timbrook will be playing second base, and Aiden Long will be at first. No difference in the infield, nor the outfield, as Josh Johnson and Jake Casey will patrol the corners, while Colin Matthews plays center field. First pitch to Cooper Weiss, who left the yard in the first inning. And game one will be a called strike. Minus five. Minus five right off the bat. For the pitcher, for the pitcher. Cooper Weiss attempts to show the bunt. Gets a piece of it. He'll fall behind 0-2, and, and he's choking up against the speed of Whitman. Whitman comes set and unison with Mickness in agreement. Benji Brokman takes a step back towards the bag, but Whitman delivers to home. <laughs> the 0-2. Yeah. Fastball blown by. Cooper Weiss for the first out of the inning. Number 29, David Nova. So in steps David Novak. Novak, the sophomore from Zionsville, Indiana, steps in, went four for six earlier this week against Ohio State. Had a hit against Kent State earlier today. Scored three times. Hits one weekly out to Matthews or Jackson over at third base. Relays it over to second. And Tim Brooks steps on the back for the second out. Fielder's choice. We'll see Novak on first. Benji Brokman will leave the bases on the five to four put out. And we'll see Ryland Zaborowski. Zaborowski. 
hit his 15th home run of the season earlier today. A line shot that got out of the field quicker than he can say his last name. And Zabo awaits the first pitch from Whitman. Indecisive on the breaking ball from Whitman. And we'll get you his scouting report in the second inning. Cutter on the outside. Called for a second strike. Oh, 2 to the first baseman. Swinging strike. And zeros on the board across. We head to the second inning here on Love and Honor Live. Reed Mouse on the call here on Love and Honor Live. Sean Dixon, the producer extraordinaire for this three-game series between Miami and Kent State. Game two, Miami took the first one 12-3. to three. Game three will conclude tomorrow. We'll be back out here. You can also watch the softball three-game series against Akron on our channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like the channel. Leading off will be Aiden Longwell, and he's been a thorn not only in Miami's side, but everyone this side of the Mississippi as of late. Two hits in the earlier game as his check swing just barely gets foul. He's batting 434 on the season. The junior from Maslin, Ohio, has had a multi-hit ball game in each of his last six starts. Egbert's big leg kick and pitch. It's a swinging strike from Longwell. More about Kitten Egbert in a second. The 0-2. Breaking ball gets Longwell out in front. Defensively, Miami aligns as is. Tommy Harrison will be in the batter, battery with Egbert. Over on the right side of the infield will be Zaborowski and Dylan Baker, Evan Applewick and Cooper Weiss on the left side. Out in the outfield, the exact same starting three outfielders, Brian Zapp, Zach McDonald, and Benji Brokman from left to right. The 89-mile-an-hour fastball from Egbert. Can't get Longwell, Longwell to chase. Swinging strikeout for Egbert, and that's three Ks to the first four batters faced. And you'll see Michael McNamara. The shortstop, number 38, Michael McNamara. So I didn't have the chance to take you through Kent State's starting lineup. You've already seen Kyle Jackson, Colin Matthews, Justin Mickness, Aiden Longwell, Mike no Michael McNamara now at the plate for the Golden Flashes. Mac Timbrook is in the on-deck circle. He's batting six. Josh Johnson will be batting seventh. Jake Casey moving up from the nine hole to the eighth slot. And then Jake, or rather Jock Moserek, will be batting nine. And McNamara with a deep drive out to left field. That was a bomb, folks. One-nothing now. 
as Kent State takes their first lead of the day. The ball went so far it wasn't registered on the trackman. Number 17, Mac Timbrook. Down the left field line, McNamara got all of that. Ken Egbert was cruising before that pitch, and the golden flashes are on top here to begin things. So Mac Timbrook now steps in. Had an O for earlier today. So Ken Egbert, he's a senior from Tip City, Ohio. Went to Tippecanoe. Didn't have to travel too far to go to school here at Miami as he gets a swinging strike over Mac Timbra. Pitched in 14 games last year. He made four starts and he had a save. Been getting various appearances on the mound throughout his career at Miami. Of course, that shortened 2020 season. He started four games. 2021, he appeared in 13, starting in three. And now has become a weekend starter for the Red Hawks. And he has shined in his senior season as he gets his fourth strikeout of the game. So very sharp through the first two frames, and minus one pitch. Number 32, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson steps in. So if you're wondering about if you heard that loud crowd on the Michael McNamara home run, the junior is from St. Ignatius. And for whatever reason, the entire St. Ignatius baseball team is here in attendance. So they got a big cheer out of the alumni. 1-1 one, one here to Josh Johnson. The 2-1 is skied high down towards the first base bullpen. Ryland Zaborowski looking to reach over into the bullpen, but though he is lanky, isn't long enough to reach over and make that grab. So 2-2 two is the count. Two-two. Two. Just missing off the edge. Slider couldn't get Johnson to chase. And couldn't get the home plate umpire, Daryl Morton Jr., to call. Strike three. So our stat sheet says Daryl Morton Jr. is the home plate umpire. I don't believe that's the case. I believe it's actually Matt Cunningham. The payoff pitch here to Johnson. Breaking ball, doesn't come back down to earth, and Egbert knew it right away, as that's a two-out walk. Good at bat there from Johnson, making Egbert throw a lot of pitches. And we'll see Jake Casey. Jake Casey batting 235 on the season, has started in most of the games for the Golden Flashes. The sophomore out of Pittsburgh had a one for three. And his 235 isn't indicative of the season that he's had. He's really just been struggling as of late. Started off red hot to begin his sophomore campaign, but has hit a little bit of a snag. One for his last 12, and two for his last 22. Two zero here to Casey. Josh Johnson takes a modest lead off of first base. Bit of rain coming in. It shouldn't rain too long. The 
This was not originally on the weather radar, but here we are dealing with it as Egbert comes back on the 3-0. Three one. Three one just misses, so it's back to back walks. So taking some precautious measures here with the rain Number coming 18, and going. Runners on first and second, two away still for Egbert, and it's the bottom half of Kent State's lineup. Jo Josh Morozik, didn't see him here in game one, the left-handed swinger, chases at the first pitch he sees. Owen wins the count. Egbert comes set on the 1 0, or the 0 1 rather, and gets Morozik to just get off the end of the bat. Morozik comes in batting 322. This is his 16th start of the season. And Egbert gets him to chase. So a strikeout to stop the threat from the Golden Flashes, though they do get a run here in the top half of the second inning. That's one nothing. Stay tuned. You're watching Love and Honor Live. So welcome back to Oxford, Ohio, bottom of the second here on Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. one nothing our score, and Miami has Dylan Baker come to the plate. Baker moving up to the five hole against Joe Whitman. Baker, nice game there in game one. And quickly... Joe Whitman is ahead, 0-2. Pieced down the left field line, but more than foul. Bit of rain has caused a bit of stress for everyone in the stands. It was a nice sunny day for most of the early afternoon as down the right field line, Dylan Baker has completely lost Kent State's right fielder. He's rounding second and heading for third. The throw not in time as it gets by the starting third baseman, Kyle Jackson. So the wind is blowing directly out to right field and the right fielder, Jake Casey, just lost track of the ball hit off the bat of Dylan baseman, Baker. Number 16, Evan Applewick. So we'll see Evan Applewick with a runner on third. Evan Applewick moving up from the nine hole to the six hole as well. What an interesting start 
to this second inning. First pitch is foul tipped. So we're putting a protective cover over our center field camera. So we're going to stick with this look for the time being as Evan Applewick waves at the 0-1, indecisive on that cutter from Whitman. Whitman kicks, steals, and Applewick takes the 0-2. Missed, so says home plate umpire, Matt Cunningham. Whitman will try again. Applewick fouls one straight back. You can tell it looks like it's just gotten gloomy here in Oxford, Ohio. Miami with a chance to even the game up at one. It's the one-two. Applewick chops one over to the left side of the infield. Nice job by Kyle Jackson to make the play off the turf, throw across the infield, but even better job by Evan Applewick at bringing in Dylan Baker after the leadoff triple. Miami does the, gets the job done by tying the game up at 1-1. Left fielder, number six, Brian Zapp. So Zapp steps in, one on or one away, one run already played it. And Whitman misses high. John Sapphire, the home plate umpire from a game ago, will say that Zap came around on that 2-0 offering. So the count is now 2-1. Fouled straight back. So checking the forecast, we might see some more rain as the game progresses. The 2-2. Whitman can't get it to fall back down to earth. And the count is full. 3-2, the payoff pitch to Zap. Chopped foul towards Kent State's dugout. The 3-2 hit off the handle of Brian Zapp. And Jackson will be underneath it for the second outs. So 5-3 put out for the first out and an F5 for the second. And we'll see Zach McDonald. McDonald first pitch swinging, fouls one over towards Kent State's dugout. The 0 1 misses down in the dirt. Whitman has just allowed one earned run in each of his last two starts. As line down the left field line will be an extra base hit from Zach McDonald. McDonald, who had a couple of strikeouts in game one, comes back with authority with a two-out double. So two on, or two away and one on. Finally, we got our center field camera back. Now it's the catcher, number 25. It'll be Tommy Harrison. Harrison, the true freshman.
Harrison from Cleveland, St. Ed's. Lefty on lefty. Anderson coming in, batting 200 on the season. Has had three hits in his previous two starts. Seeing the ball a little better. Two runs against Ohio State earlier this week. And two RBIs. The 1-1 finds the strike zone. Whitman trying to to tiptoe out of this second inning with this game tied at one all. Called strike three. We'll leave the runner stranded out at second, but Miami answers back. It's one all here as we head to the third inning. Top of the third inning here in Oxford, Ohio. We're at Hayden Park at McKee Field. Well, I said that backwards. McKee Field here at Hayden Park. I'm Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. So we weathered the storm of the rain, the shotgun start, and here we are in the third inning, finally settling in. Kitten Egbert back out on the rubber for the Red Hawks as they're looking to take game two against the Kent State Golden Flashes. We talked about how Miami has been playing just much better ball than they were playing to begin the season. Though they have only won one of their last, or two of their last five games, you can look at each of the three game series against Ohio University and say that Miami should have won each of those ball games. Of course, took game one against Kent State. Looking to take a Saturday sweep. But it will come down to the, the arm of Kitten Egbert. He can mirror the performance from Connor Oliver, who went seven strong. And Kyle Jackson will begin the third inning with a line shot into center field for a single. First time through the order, Egbert gave up just one hit and one run. Number 13, struck out fielder, five Colin batters, Matthews. walked two. The defensive alignment for Miami, similar to how they had it in game one, the only difference is David Novak has been replaced by Tommy Harrison behind the plates. So Colin Matthews, who flew out to left field, Almost left the yard, but Brian Zapp was able to make a nice play as the ball stayed in. The wind has subsided here in game two. We saw it blowing out to right center field all throughout the first game of this doubleheader. Egbert misses up and in. Up and running is Jackson. Tommy Harrison can't keep hold of the transfer. And Jackson will take second base. Great pitch for Harrison to make an attempt to throw out. Jackson just couldn't get into his throwing hands. And now it's 2-1 against Matthews. Swinging strike is Ken Egbert gets a lot of swings and misses. 
Not overpowering stuff. Certainly doesn't have the stuff of his counterpart today, Joe Whitman. But fanning more batters to the first two innings. The payoff pitch to Matthews. Hammered down the left field line, but that'll go foul, hit off a dormitory out beyond the Jay Hayden Baseball Center. And just get a redo it here at 3 2. Foul over towards the first base dugout now. And we'll do it again. Egbert's payoff pitch called strike three on Matthews. Six strike out of the game for the righty. And now he'll see Justin Mickness. Number six, catcher Justin Mickness. One away, Aiden Longwell on deck, and we know the threat he possesses. Egbert pitched 49 of the ball game here in the third inning. One oh. Hit over into the four hole. That'll get in the outfield. Benji Brokemon coming in to field the ball. He'll throw it in as Zabarowski will be right there for the cutoff. Kyle Jackson comes in to score. It's now two to one. Now number five, first baseman Aiden Logwell. So Kent State regains the lead. Looking for more as they have their best hitter at the plate with one aboard. First pitch gets a swinging strike. 89 on the gun. Infield shaded to the right a tad. Cooper Weiss. Moving towards second base. Also because he's got a field second on the double play opportunity. Agbert on the 0-2. Chopped foul. Just beyond the reach of Zabarowski. <laughs> Modest lead over there for Mickness. Mickness with that RBI is 27th of the season. Fourth on the team. Trailing Colin Matthews, Mac Timbrook, and then Aiden Longwell. Longwell with 54 RBIs. One hopper to Zaborowski, the out at second, the relay back to Zabo in time. Three to six to three, double play gets out the biggest threats in the Golden Flashes lineup. Two to one, our score as we head to the bottom half of the third here on Love and Honor Live.
Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. I might see some more rain in the next few innings, but hopefully it subsides. Kent State's Joe Whitman back out on the rubber for the Golden Flashes. He'll face off against the top half of Miami's order. Thank you for joining in. We always appreciate having you. Be here for the next first few weeks. Level. First time, first season Come ever right doing Miami Rokemon. broadcast. We've had a fun time doing it. Of course, last week the softball team welcomed in the Oklahoma Sooners, number one team in the country. That was a blast to be a part of. And with the baseball team playing better at the tail end of the year, they're looking to pull off an upset and take the series against Kent State. And maybe, just maybe, have a long shot at being one of those teams to sneak in to the MAC Conference Tournament. Or rather, just the MAC Tournament. Benji Brokemond, he walked his first time. Behind in the count, 1-2 on Whitman. The one two misses upstairs. The two two. Swing in, strike out. And after regaining the lead, Kent State sits down the leadoff batter Weiss. for Miami. Sounds Cooper Weiss. He went down swinging his first time. And he will wave at the first pitch he sees from Whitman, an 84-mile off-speed pitch that Weiss swings over top of. Popped sky high towards the first base bullpen and going out of play. So we'll stay here at one and two. Getting the sign from Mickness. Called strike three, back-to-back -back K's to start this third inning. And Whitman is getting stronger as the game progresses. A lot of scouts here in attendance here today to watch the South Pole. And we'll see David Novak, whose big leg kick and swing is fouled over towards the third base dugout. Whitman can't get on top of it. Five Ks already in the ball game for Whitman. Yes, we get a swinging strike at the hands of David Novak. The one, two rides inside to the designated hitter and plunks him. Not the first time that David Novak has been hit this season, and not the last. As Novak 15, Hawk, first base has been Raymond hit Zemerowski. by a pitch. That's the 11th time he leads the team in that. Not afraid to get in harm's way, and we'll see Ryland Zaborowski. Mentioned Zaborowski put himself in the top 20 in home runs in the entire NCAA just in game one, his 15th big fly. Only five batters in the country have more than 17 home runs this year. Zaborowski flirting, getting up in that range as he is heating up as 
we get to the back end of the season. 1-1 one, one to Zaborowski, who went down swinging his first time. The 93 mile an hour fastball brushes Zaborowski off the plate. Two and one. Sun shining through the clouds now. Beat hard over towards Jackson, the third baseman, who backhands it, throws it across the diamond for the third and final out. Miami leaves a runner stranded as we head to the fourth inning. It's two to one here on Love and Honor Line. Welcome back, guys. Top of the fourth inning here. Checking the forecast, 53 degrees. So similar to what we saw, nine miles an hour wind. It's now pushing anywhere from out to right center field from to the left foul pole to the right foul pole. So switching around as the game continues. It looks dark and gloomy over to our north. But we're going to get this game in because we've got turf here at McGee Field. That's what you get it for. Michael McNamara, Mac Timbrook, Josh Johnson do well for Kent State. And McNamara left the yard. And a thundering home run his first time around. Egbert misses on the outside. McNamara, that was his eighth home run on the season. Now tied for the team lead with Jake Casey. The 2-0. Chopped hard down the third baseline, but foul. McNamara was second team All-Mac as a sophomore. He started in 39 games, hit 338. And one week last year, he went 10 for 14 with 11 RBIs and three games against Western Michigan. So a heck of a series. A series that garnered him Mac Player of the Week, but that was a year ago. Looking to continue his candidacy to be an all-Mac honoree once again. Egbert falls behind 3-1. Popped. Out of play. Tip City native has the sign and the payoff pitch. McNamara out to left center field. Does he have another McDonald given chase? It's gone. So he tied Jake Casey for the team lead his last at bat. And this time took the team lead. On a game that sees his alma mater show up to watch him play, St. Ignatius. McNamara leaves the yard twice. Number 17, 
second baseman, Mac Timbrook. So Tim Brook shows bunt, lays one down, but it's going to go foul. Egbert's only given up four hits. The first three frames, two of them have left the yard, though. Swinging strike gets ahead of Tim Brook 0-2. Two says Timbrook did not come around. Egbert has gone at least six innings in each of his last four starts, all here in conference play. As the one-two is found straight back. Went eight innings against Bowling Green, in which he gave up two earned runs. Six innings against Western Michigan, in which he gave up a, a single earned run, and seven innings against Eastern Michigan. Oh, you gave Miami a chance to win that ball game, going six innings strong, allowing three earned runs. So, has matched his season high and starts with three earned runs through the first three innings pitched. The one, two, missing on the inside. So says Matt Cunningham. Tim Brook awaits the 2-2, chokes up on the bat, the left-handed batter, sees one in the turf. Egbert working hard in this at bat. The payoff to the starting second baseman. Fouls away. And you hear the cheers from the Kent State dugout. And typically with each waning pitch, the odds shift in favor of the hitter. And at some point, when you're working as a catcher and a pitcher and you throw in the kitchen sink at a guy, you just shrug your shoulders and say, I don't know what to give him. The 3-2. Misses. What an at-bat by Mac Timbrook to work the walk. And they're going to go out there and talk to Egbert. Scoreboard looking like binary code through the first three innings. Zeros and ones up there. Kent State with a runner aboard and already... One run in the inning would like to hang a crooked number. Egbert has already induced a double play this ball game. Would love to see Josh Johnson roll over a ball, but Josh Johnson has very quick speed. This will be a tough turn. Mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Miami in the same bottoms, the pinstripes, but with a new all-red top. Kent State in the same uniforms they wore in game one. Yesterday's game was, they were trying to get it in despite the forecast showing nothing but rain. First pitch and you see Tim Brook take off. Fouled over towards the first base dugout. Mac Tim Brook, eight for 10 on stolen bases this year. Kent State has stolen 88 bases coming into this ball game. Have been thrown out 17 times. We saw Miami have a lot of success in game one. Stealing on Mickness. And that was unfound territory for the Golden, for the golden Flashes. 
Timbrook up and running again. Tommy Harrison looking ready to roll. Tommy Harrison has thrown out five batters this year. As what a pitch from Kent Egbert to put down Johnson for the first out of the inning. Number 21, right fielder Jake Casey. So we'll see Jake Casey. Check on the runner, Tim Brook, once more. <laughs> Swing and strike over Casey. Kent Egbert with seven strikeouts already in the ball game. Miami, though they're not having the season that they've wanted. 12 and 28 coming into this ball game. They sit in the top five in the entire country. And strikeouts per nine innings. Trailing only the likes of Tennessee, Duke, LSU, and Wake Forest. They are striking out 11.6 batters for every nine innings pitched. The one, two. Just missing at the bottom part of the zone. Now the other end of that coin is out of 295 teams in Division One baseball, Miami sits at 275 in walks per nine in. So they live and die by not letting their opponent put the ball in play. Two-two. Casey awaits the offering from Egbert. Fouled pack. I'll tell you what, these Kent State hitters are making Egbert work. Came into this inning being fairly efficient. He is now right around 80 pitches thrown. Two, two, just missing down. One away here in the top half of the fourth inning. Hour into this ball game. First game took two hours and 30 minutes. Hagbert comes set. Tim Brooks up and running. Strike him out, throw him out. Double play to end the inning. Hagbert. Freezing Jake Casey and Tommy Harrison throwing a laser out to second. We head to the bottom half of the fourth. It's three to one.
bottom of the fourth here in Oxford, Ohio. You're watching Love It On Live here on Chatterbox Sports. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like the stream. If you want to know when we're going to go live, go ahead and hit that notification bell for Miami fans. We will have games three of softball tomorrow and the game three series in baseball here. You can catch it all on Chatterbox Sports if you're a local sports fan. Be sure to check around the channel. Tom Brenneman's off the bench, goes live here on Chatterbox Sports from 10 to noon, Monday through Friday. Due up is Dylan Baker, and Baker tripled his last time. Came around and scored on that ground ball from Evan Applewick. Kent State has scored one run in the second, third, and fourth inning. They're up three to one. Miami looking to answer back. Out in front of the 0-1 offering. Grounds a one-hopper over to Kyle Jackson. He throws it up the first baseline, but Longwell there. It's a 5-3 put out for the first out. third baseman, Evan Applewick. So we'll see Evan Applewick, an RBI his first time. Missing on the inside. A couple weeks ago, we saw Miami take place in the Joe Nuxall Classic. Four teams from southwestern Ohio constant, consistently playing that. UC, Xavier, Miami, and Wright State. Miami lost to Xavier and UC in that exhibition. Applewick on a screw out to McNamara. But McNamara reaches up for the second out. Good piece there from Evan Applewick. Second time that we've seen him line, line out to Kent State. Left fielder, Brian Zapp. Back in game one, hit a rocket out to right field, but it was right at Jake Casey. So now we'll see Brian Zapp. Zapp has flown out here in the infield. Two zero here. Zap gets ahead in the count. It's a four pitch walk. That brings up number nineteen, center fielder Zach McDonald. So McDonald steps in. He doubled his last time. Was stranded out at second base. Would love to reach a gap once again. McDonald. A lot of pop in the bat. Nine home runs, 14 doubles. Sophomore from Portage, Michigan. Fouls straight back against Whitman. Oh, 2 Check on the runner over at first. Wouldn't be a bad time to have Zap up and running. He does lead the team in stolen bases. Zap slides into second in time. Nice throw from Mickness. But Tim Brook couldn't put the tag on in time. The one-two. 
Tyson on the outside, even it up. McDonald, 27 walks, 59 strikeouts on the season. Awaits the 2-2. And he'll go full. Nessing off the outside. Base hit should score. Zap. The payoff pitch. Swing and strike three as Whitman blows by Zach McDonald. So they leave a runner stranded out at second base, still 3-1 as we head to the fifth. Get Egbert back out on the rubber for the Red Hawks. Fed in the top half of the fifth inning. Kent State has scored each of the previous three innings. Miami got out of a hairy situation back in the fourth with a strike him out, throw him out. It's two consecutive innings. A double play has concluded. The half inning for the Golden Flashes. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love It On Our Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Checked moments ago, and it looks like the softball team was up seven to one on Akron. As you saw the Red Hawks looking to host the MAC tournament in softball, while the baseball team is looking to knock off the number one team here in the MAC and get some help and possibly sneak in to the conference tournament. Only took the top four teams. Miami didn't do themselves any favor by starting off slow. But they won game one against Kent State here. And Kent Egbert gets a three-pitch strikeout to begin things here in the fifth inning. That was Morozek going down on strikes. For the second time today. Morozek now 0 for 2. And it's Kyle Jackson. Egbert now with 8 Ks in the ball game as he gets another swinging strike. Kent Egbert, his season high is 10 Ks. That came against Toledo. Punched out nine against Western Michigan. Two away from that season high. Jackson, one for two. And make out strikeout number nine. Four in a row for Egbert. And we'll see Colin Matthews. Center fielder, Colin Matthews. Matthews 0 for 2. Flew out to left field and struck out his last time up. That high leg kick from Egbert. About as iconic as his baby blue glove. Let 
definitely has a sense of style out there. Baby blue glove. As Colin Matthews sends one back where it came from. For a two-out single. And the stirrup socks that end right around the shin. Baby blue glove, high leg kick. Certainly a pitcher you remember. Fifth hit of the ball game for Kent State. Has them get to the middle part of their order with two away and a runner on. And running right away is Colin Matthews. The throw from Tommy Harrison in time. And Matthews gunned down from here to there as Harrison shows off the cannon once again. We head to the bottom half of the fifth. 3-1 here on Love and Honor Live. So Tommy Harrison guns down Colin Matthews to conclude the top half of the fifth inning. And due up is the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio, Harrison. And it's back to the top half of the order. The lefty getting the start in game two, giving Novak a rest. As the season continues and you see the lineup become more of a regular thing for Miami, as earlier in the year they're shifting people around, getting different bats in the lineup, but you're seeing the same cast of characters. It's been Tommy Harrison that has still been giving Novak a break. Bounced out to Tim Brook. Harrison can't beat out the throw. Tim Brook over to Longwell for the first down. It's a four to three put out. Number 11, right fielder Benji Brokemond. So now we'll see Benji Brokemond. Brokemond 0 for 1, struck out his last time. Whitman, 68 pitches coming into the at-bat. Gets a piece of this as he fouls it out of play and out of the grandstand here at Hayden Park. Whitman misses upstairs. Game three of this series will take place tomorrow at 1 p.m. You can catch it right here on Love and Honor Live, so be sure to tune in. Miami looking to take the series. Like Kent State here in game two, then push for a sweep. While the Golden Flashes look to push for a rubber match. 2-2. Two -two. Bounce slowly. Now to Coach Aiden. Whitman shakes no. Mickness and Whitman in unison as Whitman misses low and the count is ran full. Gets pie, Mickness, and that's going to be ball four. Brokeman not in a rush to get to first base. This has to quickly get to the ball. Cooper Weiss. And 
there's one on and one away for Cooper Weiss. A short stop for the Red Hawks, second in the team in home runs. Weiss now up over a 300 batting average. Brokemon up and moving with the pitch. It's going to be fouled over the first base dugout. Weiss with a six-game hitting streak coming into this one. Whitman comes set, sun shining now on the south pole. They'll check on Brokemont. Brokemont had a couple of stolen bases. I mentioned Cooper Weiss, second on the team in hitting. He trails only Parker Lester, who is missing due to injury. So they've missed him, and Whitman freezes Cooper Weiss on the inside for a called strike three. So that's the hat trick for Cooper Weiss. And we'll see David Novak, who's reached aboard twice, hit by a pitch his last time, reached by a fielder's choice back in the first inning. We'll see if Benji Brokman is up and running. He's 11 for 12 on stolen bases this season. In worst case scenario, you got your three, four, five due up next inning, and yeah, he's moving, and they check on him. He's caught out in between first and second, but no! McNamara laid the tag on Brokemond, and Brokemond breaks the ball out of the glove. So move Brokemond into scoring position. And here we go. First pitch to Novak. He's hacking. Riding in on the inside. Fouls it back. Oh, one's the count. The 0 1. Foul back again. We'll do it here at 0 and 2. The lights turned on here at McKee Field. Oh, two. Messing down and the turf. Broke on 180 feet away from making this. A one-run ball game, but Novak has to find some outfield grass. Chops it foul. Working a nice at-bat. The all-max selection from a season ago. Staying alive. Zaborowski in the on-deck circle. Infield playing straight up. Tim Brook. Controlling the second base bag, making sure Brokemon doesn't get off too far. He was cut out between second and third last game. The one-two. Found back again. Novak right on every pitch that women has to offer. And Kent State is getting some arms up and moving in the bullpen. Fouled back again. What about this at bat from the designated hitter for Miami? Choke it up. Whitman keeps challenging him. And Novak keeps fouling away. Whitman has a changeup grip in his hand started right now. See if he changes it in his glove. A little bit of movement. It's a fastball working away from Novak, taken all the way. Come on, 
2-2. Foul back again. What about this at bat, folks? And I talked about it earlier in the broadcast. The longer these at bats go, the, the more they favor the hitter. And you get frustrated when you're on the mound, when you're calling pitches behind the plates, when you're unable to retire a hitter, it becomes very frustrating. 2-2, two, two, two away, runner on second base. And the cutter comes right back into the zone. And Whitman wins the battle over Novak. Miami leaves another ran runner stranded. We head to the sixth inning. It's 3-1. to one. Three, four, five, two up for Kent Stain here in the top half of the six inning on rebounds. Doubleheader action here on Love and Honor Live on Chatterbox Sports. I'm here through all 18 innings and more if we need it. Be back tomorrow. Deeply enjoyed calling these Miami games this spring. A couple more weeks of it. Two more weeks after this. I believe it's softball next weekend, and we conclude with baseball playing against Ball State the first week of May. So Justin Mickness due up for the Golden Flashes. First pitch changeup gets Mickness way out in front. Coming into the inning. Kenton Egbert's at 85 pitches. He has struck out 10. Looking for a season high, which is 10. Looking to beat it. So Egbert, his first two appearances this year, he threw two innings against Indiana where he allowed three earned runs. He then threw one inning against North Alabama where he allowed four earned runs. Since then, the guy has been sharp as anyone in this pitching rotation. This is deep out to center field. Mickness leaves the yard as that nearly hit our center field camera. Straight away to dead center. 414 feet. Third solo home run of the game for Kent State as they now have a 4 1 lead. And the first baseman, Aiden Longwell. So, three solo shots in the game. It's worth mentioning that each of them have been to begin the inning. So Egbert's coming out of the dugout, still fresh. And Kent State's hopping all over. Breaking ball, breaks stack, back down into the strike zone. One-one, foul tipped. And Longwell 
Finds himself in a 1-2. On the season, get you Mickness's home run total. That was home run number six for Justin Mickness. And Longwell goes down on strikes again. So Egbert with a new season high of 11 Ks. You take away the three pitches, the two that he's thrown to Michael McNamara, who steps in the batter's box, and the one he threw to Mickness. And Egbert's been so sharp. So McNamara, two for two, two solo home runs. And Egbert misses in the turf. The 1-0. Just missing on the outside. Egbert has completely fallen behind Michael McNamara. And it's worth mentioning, McNamara leads the team with nine home runs now. He has hit five in the last week. Hit two home runs in the midweek game against Tiffin. And left the yard in game three against Akron. So five home runs in the last four games played. So 3-2. Egbert has worked it back to full. The payoff. And this misses on the inside. It's a one-out walk to McNamara. And Mac Timbrook steps in. The second baseman, Mac Timbrook. Some action warming up in Miami's bullpen. So we'll see how close Egbert is to the end of his rope. Timbrook lays one on the ground. Beautiful bunt. Tommy Harrison coming out from a crouch and makes the play at first. What a bump by Tim Brook, but an even better play by the freshman catcher. Working around the ball, squaring up his shoulders and throwing a strike over to Ryland Zaborowski. And there's two away as Josh Johnson steps in. They actually teach catchers that if it's down the third base line to Work on a reverse pivot. Evan Applewick can't field it cleanly on the bunt as he puts his glove right before it goes foul, but it hits off the thumb of his glove. And there's runners on the corner for Jake Casey. Right fielder, Jake Casey. So we'll see what the official score is. It looks like they are going to give a hit to Josh Johnson and not apply the air to Evan Applewick. And Jake Casey steps in. Casey 0 for 2. Two Ks. Went 1 for 3 in the game earlier. Back-to-back -back strikes, puts Casey in a well. Runners on the corners, two away. 0-2 count to Jake Casey. Infield shifted to the right side. Cooper Weiss playing very near the second base bag. 
And Josh Johnson was up and running with the pitch, but it was fouled back and we'll do it again here at 0-2. Johnson up and moving again, but Egbert gets the swinging strikeouts, and he'll leave the runner stranded at first and third. Kent State adds on to their lead with a solo home run off the bat of Justin McNiss. Four to one, we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Is the fundraising unit for Miami Athletics on a mission to provide resources to Miami student athletes in their pursuit to graduate as champions. Bottom of the six, Ryland Zaborowski, Dylan Baker, Evan Applewick do up for the Red Hawks. And look at this, the sun has come out here in Oxford, Ohio. We thank you for tuning in. Joe Whitman back out on the bump for Kent State. I'm Reed Mouse, you're watching Love and Honor Live. Whitman, right around 90 pitches coming into this inning. I'll pull up his season stats, but the longest he's gone this year is six innings. As Zaborowski pieces one down the left field line, it bounces up and rattles against the left field wall. A double for the first baseman from Miami. Third hit in the ball game for the Red Hawks. Zaborowski, who hit a home run in game one. Now with a double, and in steps Baker, who had a triple all the way back in the second inning. So this has been the end of Whitman's leash this year. Right around sixth innings. Baker first pitch swinging. Beats one into the ground over to McNamara, who throws it across the diamond for the first out. So first pitch out. Third baseman, Evan Applewick. Evan Applewick. First pitch misses. Whitman comes set, gets the sign from Mickness. The wind has picked up here in the sixth inning, blowing hard out to right center field. Worth mentioning that Applewick does have some power to opposite field. Evan Applewick on base percentage at 381. Went 0 for 4 against Kent State in the first game. He's won for his last 10. Heading to count 3-1. 
Whitman comes set. Called strike out on the outside edge. The count is full. Kent State with a right-hander in the bullpen. The payoff. Hit well out to center field. Matthews back tracing. He'll have it. In stride for the second out. Matthews back traced. Turned around and caught it right at his hip. For the second out, and that's the third time today that Avin Applewick has put one on the screws with no hits to show for it. So now it's Brian Zapp trying to get this runner in from second base. Zapp, who hit one on the screws as well, his last at bat. A line out right to Michael McNamara. As he falls behind 0-2. Whitman comes set. Tries to find the back door. Zap turns in. It's a one and two count. Zaborowski out at second base. This is hit off the end of Brian Zap's bat. He's trying to beat it out to first, and it gets into the outfield. McNamara reached out to try and make a play on the ball, and by doing that, it hit off the end of his glove and trickled into center field, allowing Ryland Zaborowski to come around and score. It's 4-2. to two. If McNamara would have just allowed that ball to get to the second baseman, Tim Brook, yes, Brian Zapp would have gotten to first, but Ryland Zaborowski would still be waiting at third base. Instead, the tying run comes to the plate in the form of Zach McDonald. So we'll see a new arm. We'll step aside. It's 4-2. to two. There's one runner on, two away here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. We'll be right back. It's Love and Honor Live. So Zach McDonald will step into the batter's box. He'll face off against Jack Cartsonis. Jack Cartsonis, scout important on him is 92 to 94 on the heat. 82 to 86 slider. Fifth appearance on this season. Has struck out eight batters in seven and two-thirds innings pitched. Allowed three earned runs, five hits. And you got to wonder, I don't know the full background because... He went nearly two months without pitching. Threw against Jacksonville on February 18th. You didn't see him again until 
a two-inning performance against Ohio State on April 4th. So I wonder if there's an injury or if he's just working his way into the bullpen. But regardless, the lengthy right-hander is in the ball game. McDonald one for two. Waves at the slider from Cart Sonis. And McDonald is behind 0-2 and he's in a well. Zap will see if he's up and moving on the 0-2. Slider working away from McDonald and McDonald waves at it. He'll go down on strikes. But Miami answers back. Brings it back into a two-run ball game. We end of the seventh inning. It's 4-2 here on Love and Honor Live. Top of the seventh, 4-2 our score, and for the first time this season, Zach Maxey is coming out of the pin in relief for the Red Hawks. Maxey, this is his 10th appearance on the season. A 2-6 record, 9.42 ERA. He has struck out 42 batters, has walked 24. He's got 35 innings pitched. So close the book on Kitten Egbert. He went six innings. Struck out 12, allowed seven hits, four walks, and four earned runs. He's currently in line for the loss. So he's in line for the loss. Whitman's in line for the win. If this lead shall hold, Maxi will face off against the bottom of this Kent State lineup. Rozek. Rozek 0 for 2 with 2Ks. Shows bunt, says that Morozek did actually attempt. Evan Applewick right in on the line to make sure that Morozik doesn't try any funny business. The left-handed swinger gives a try at the 0-1 fastball, or rather breaking pitch. Way out in front, 0-2 now the count. Mentioned the first time out of the pen this season for Maxi as he misses on the 0-2. Most recently gave up seven earned runs and in five innings of work against OU last weekend. The St. Ed's battery between Maxie and Tommy Harrison. Two to the count. Maxie over top delivery. Gets Morozik to Offer at the 2-2 off speed. Fouls it back off of the chest protector of Tommy Harrison. And gets Morozek to chase. A hat trick for the anchor of Kent State's lineup. Now number four, Kyle Jackson. So back to the top of the order.
Kyle Jackson, he's working on one for three. And struck out twice. Maxie gets ahead of the starting third baseman for Kent State. Just missing on the outside. Hard down the right field line. We're here in the top half of the seventh inning. And I'll tell you what, first team to hang a crooked number in this ball game is probably going to come out on top. Bunch of ones and zeros on the board. Kent State has scored a run in the second, third, fourth, and sixth inning. Miami has scored a run in the second and sixth. Jackson pops one out into shallow right field. Dylan Baker working back. He'll be underneath it for the second out. Thirteen, Colin Matthews. So now it's Colin Matthews. back. 0-2 oh, the count to Matthews. <laughs> Foul tip but in the mitt of Tommy Harrison. And Maxi comes out of the pin and retires two of the three batters he faces on strikes. Stretch time here at Oxford. It's four to two as we head to the bottom half of the seventh. To the bottom of the seventh we go. Once again, out on the bump for Kent State. Start Zonas. He'll face off against Tommy Harrison, then back to the top half of this Miami order. Tommy Harrison, 0 for 2. Tries at the 1-0 from Cartsonis. Actually hits it twice. Fouls it off the end of his bat. Then on his backswing, hit it towards Miami's dugout. Got to say, that might have been the first time I've ever seen that happen. The 1-1. Miss in the turf. Tommy Harrison out to deep left center field. This has a chance as it bounces up against the left center field wall. A double for the freshman. Yeah. 
So now the tie and run comes to the plate in the form of Benji Brokemont. Stepping in next, number 11, Benji Brokemont. So nobody away, and a speedy Brokemund comes to the plate. I wonder if they're going to have him lay it down with Cooper Weiss in the on-deck circle. He does show bunt. Longwell, the first baseman, with his toes on the grass cut out of the turf. Jackson playing pretty much even with the baseline. 1-0, Brokemon takes, and it misses on the outside. Cartsonis, the leadoff double, and now behind 2-0 to the leadoff hitter of Benji Brokemon. Bounced over towards the right side of the infield. Tim Brook doesn't field it cleanly, quickly recovers. Fields it out by his right ankle and throws it on over to Longwell. So Brokemon doesn't beat out the bobble from Tim Brook, but does move Harrison up 90 feet. So a productive out, hitting backside. There's one away, Cooper Weiss steps in. Weiss 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. First pitch swinging. Fouls it out of play. This is the first time that Weiss is seeing Cartsonis. So all three strikeouts came against the starting pitcher, Whitman. Just 90 feet away is Tommy Harrison. Called strike, and Weiss is one strike away from his fourth K of the ball game. Infield playing deep, they'll allow the run to score for the ground outs. Bouncing in front of home plate, Weiss taking all the way. Outfield playing fairly deep, deep as well. One, two. Bouncing in front of the plate. Again, it's two, two, and Cart Sotis is gonna have to challenge Cooper Weiss. Cooper Weiss has had an RBI in each of his last six ball games. Doesn't have one yet here in game two. And on the outside. In fact, over the last six ball games, Cooper Weiss has 16 RBIs. 16 of his 39 on the season. Looking for RBI number 40. Chops it right in front of home plate. Jackson comes up, gloves it, has no play at first. So it's an infield single. Tommy Harrison stayed put at third. So no harm done for either team. Novak, 0 for two. Struck out his last time, first pitch swinging, pops one down the right field line. Trailing foul, we'll see if any Kent State Golden Flash can get there in time, and they do not. Casey, Timbrook, Longwell all on the chase, but that falls to turf before it falls into leather. Getting gloomy once again here. 
Kind of full Ohio day of weather. Sun, rain, overcast. The 0-1 to Novak. Getting off far from first base was Cooper Weiss, but he dives back in time. He's eight for nine on stolen bases this year. Novak with 18 RBIs, batting 280 on the season. Chops one, foul. Novak with the tying run over at first base has fallen behind 0 for 2. Now Novak himself is working on a five game hitting streak. Popped sky high out to left field. Josh Johnson coming in. He'll make the play, the throw into home, not cut off, but off line as Harrison slides in. If Johnson would have thrown a strike to home, probably would have beat out Tommy Harrison. Instead, he threw it up the first base line, and it's four to three. So a sacrifice fly by the designated hitter, David Novak. And it's four to three. And Ryland Zaborowski steps in. One for three on the day. A double his last time up. He came around and scored. That was last inning. A ball in the gap will tie the game up. We'll see if Cooper Weiss is moving. Mention Weiss, eight for nine on stolen base attempts this year, third on the team. Out to deep right center field. This has a chance back against the wall, but running out of room as Colin Matthews makes a play at the warning track. Zaborowski thought he had home run number 16 on the season, but it runs out of fumes. We head to the eighth inning, the score is four to three. Top of the eighth we go here, 4-3 our score. And I mentioned it last inning, I'll say it again. Whoever hangs a crooked number in this ball game will probably walk away the victor. Let's do a quick recap. Kent State has scored one run in the second, third, fourth, and sixth inning. Three of those four runs have come on solo big flies. Miami, on the other hand, has scored one run in the second, sixth, and seventh. And it looked like Ryland Zaborowski was going to give Miami their first lead of the ball game, but it ran out of fumes. Zach Maxey back out for another inning of work, a strong seventh inning. So he's back to shut the door here in the eighth. Three, four, five, do up for Kent State here. As Maxey gets the 2-0 to foul back.
Mickness. Check swing. They look down the third base line. Neither Matt Cunningham nor John Sapphire says that Mickness came around and swung. So the count will go to three and one. Mickness left the yard his last time. Hacks at the three, one comes up empty. Mickness chokes up on the payoff pitch. Line down over to Ryland Zaborowski, but right there, hit it very hard, but right towards the lengthy first baseman. So one up, one down here in the top half of the eighth inning. So it's Aiden Longwell, and Longwell, we've oohed and awed at his recent exploitations at the plate, but comes in 0 for 3 in this ball game. 0 for 3, two strikeouts, and has grounded into a double play. Pops one sky high in the infield. Cooper Weiss calling off all the other infielders, catches it for the second out. So with that out, Longwell's 12-game hitting streak is in major jeopardy. Stepping in is Michael McNamara. And what a game he has had. Two for two, two home runs, has also walked. Now, luckily for Miami, McNamara's both of his home runs came with nobody on base. McNamara with two solo shots. Mickness, who we saw earlier in this inning, had a solo shot back in the sixth inning. That was Kent State's most recent run. Maxie. On the 1-1. In there for a called strike. And Maxie might have been given a gift there from the home plate umpire. One, two. <laughs> Missing on the outside. You don't get two in a row. So the 2-2 will have to challenge McNamara, and he gets McNamara to go down on a swinging strike. So we head to the bottom half of the eighth, a one-run ball game out here in Oxford. Stay tuned, you're watching Love and Honor Live. Bottom of the eighth inning, five, six, seven, do up for Miami. Dylan Baker, Evan Applewick, Brian Zapp, and they'll face a new arm. It's Mitchell Scott. Scott on the season. This will be his 20th appearance. He's got a 0.61 ERA, a whip below one at 0.75. He's thrown 29 in the third innings. He has allowed just 11 hits, two earned runs. He has struck out 43. He has walked 11. Opponents are hitting 117 against Scott this season. Scouting report is that he sits 85 to 89, a four-pitch mix of a slider, curveball, and changeup. 
the graduate student from California. Six foot one, 225. He's got nine saves this year, and this would be a save opportunity. His two earned runs came up in the same game when he went two and two-thirds innings pitched against the University of Tennessee Martin as he gets Dylan Baker to chase at the 2-1. So Miami with their work cut out for him down one and facing one of the best closers in the league, if not the best closer in the league. Scott gets a swing and strikeout over Dylan Baker. So Evan Applewick steps in. And we have talked about the day that Evan Applewick has had. He's 0 for 7, but he has hit the ball several times on the screws. His last two times up, he lined out to the shortstop and lined out to center field. And this would be a golden opportunity for one of those to fall. 1-0 here to Applewick. Scott, a slow leg kick, and then a violent deliverance to the pit to the plates. Those 88 on that last fastball. The 1-1. One, one. It's been almost a month and a half since the last time Mitchell Scott has given up a run. As he comes back to even the count up at two and two. Misses down in the turf. Has allowed 22 base runners this season, 11 via a hit and 11 via free pass. The payoff pitch to Applewick. Skies one into shallow right center field. Tim Brook underneath it for the second out. So comes down to Brian Zapp with two away here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. If you're wondering, Brian Zapp has hit a home run this year. He's hit three. Most recently coming on March 17th against Northern Illinois. And besides that, they came on the first weekend of the year against Georgia Tech. Zap chases at the first pitch from Mitchell Scott. Comes up empty. Scott goes right back to the turf. This time Zap lays off. This is on the inside. Two one our count. Zap lined, which would have been extra bases down the right field line, but Longwell leaps up and makes the snag for the third and final out. What a play! by the player of the year candidate here in the MAC. We head to the ninth inning, a one-run ball game here on Love and Honor Live.
So here we go. We head to the ninth inning here in Oxford. McKee Field at Hayden Park. I'm Ray Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. 4-3 our score. Zach Maxey out for another inning of work out of the pen as he'll look to keep this a one-run ball game. Out on the bump for Kent State when it gets to the bottom half of the inning is Mitchell Scott, and he is a tough egg to crack. Number 17, Mac Timbrook. So Mac Timbrook, Josh Johnson, Jake Casey do up for the Golden Flashes here in the top half of the ninth inning. Seven hits in the ball game for Kent. They have scored three runs via a home run, all solo. The first pitch to Tim Brook. Misses in the turf. He walked all the way back in the fifth inning. That was a great at bat by Tim Brook, if you recall. Consistently working against Kent Nagbert, who was almost flawless for Miami today. Connor Oliver and Kent Egbert both gave outstanding performances here in game one and game two. Two won the count. And he gets a swinging strike at the 2-1. Off speed, pulled the string on Tim Brook. It's down 2-2. Tim Brook 0 for 6 in this series. And he takes the 2-2 on the inside, just barely missing. In fact, Tim Brooks 0 for his last 13. Hit hard down the line, but foul. Foul, and Mac, very reminiscent of his at bat back in the fourth inning, just fouling away everything, choking up, working closer to the plate. He stands in the left, handed batter's box. Fouls another. We'll stay right here at full. Maxi, 26 pitches. So he's able to work quickly through the inning and. He was who you'd think would start game three, so we'll see who Miami goes with tomorrow. Called strike three on the inside. Maxi paints the corner for the first out. So in steps Josh Johnson. Johnson had a single back in the sixth inning. Shows bunt, pushes it towards the first baseline. Zaborowski doesn't come up to get it before it goes foul. So instead it does go foul and it's 0-1. Called strike two. Maxi in relief. Has struck out four batters. And has not allowed a base runner thus far. They'll check down the first baseline. They say no, Josh Johnson did not offer at that 0-2 offering. Maxi over top. And rides in on Josh Johnson. So from 0-2, missing on the 0-2, and then riding up it in. It's the first base runner Maxi has allowed. Number 21, Jake Casey. So now we'll see Jake Casey.
Johnson moving on the first pitch. Casey pops one out to right field. Benji Brokman moves about three steps to his right. Gets underneath it for the second out. Two away, and we'll see a pinch hitter. hitter. It'll be Colton Schaller. At bat next, number 11, Colton Schaller. Colton Schaller, pinch hit in the first game of this doubleheader. Schaller, a 382 hitter. Did not get a hit off the bench. But more than anything, he's just trying to turn the lineup over so they could possibly get some insurance. Schaller, 21 games played in this year. This is number 22. He has 13 hits and 34 at-bats. Two extra base hits. Schaller, a freshman from Wisconsin. Takes the first pitch he sees from Maxi. Misses on the outside. As a senior at Mount Horeb High School, he batted 541. Loses his bat, but flares one out to center field. This is going to fall for a base hit. Zach McDonald comes in, gets it off the first bounce. And Schaller threw that bat over the first base dugout. So a base hit for Schaller puts runners on the corners. There's two away, and they go back to the top half of the order. Kyle Jackson. There will be a pinch runner for Schaller. Didn't see who's coming in. Kyle Jackson comes to the plates, and you can see our center field camera has moved around. That's how much the wind has blown. It's blown out to right center field. We had to put protective film over top of it just to make sure that the rain didn't get into our camera, our equipment, and it has completely moved things around. Runners on the corners here for Kyle Jackson. Jackson, one for four. Missing and the turf. Jackson. Swing and strike from Maxi. So 1-1 one, one is the count. Two on, two away. It's a one-run ball game as Maxi checks on the pinch runner over there, and that is Connor Ashby. Ashby over at first. He's running. Swing and strike. They pause in the middle between first and second. And they will just run Ashby back to first. Flip it over to third. Dangerous throw from Cooper Weiss. Luckily, Evan Applewick holds it right there. It was a called strike, so the count is 1-2. So there's a couple rules of thumb when you get these trickery this first and third plays that you practice spend so much time practicing on and oftentimes if you're near you got a good count for your pitcher you just say hey we'll run you back to first base we won't fall into your trap and we'll go after the hitter so one two jackson chokes up on the bat ashby does take off with the pitch 
So I wonder if Miami will just allow Ashby to take second base or if Harrison will actually attempt to throw him out. Harrison has been very sharp on stolen base attempts in this ball game. But that is a much needed run for Kent State. They've got their guy on the mound, but two runs would be all pretty much shutting the door. One, two. When you're up one run, it's one bad pitch and a good swing, and the game's all tied up. And, well, Mitchell Scott has only allowed two earned runs this entire season. Still will make them feel all the more comfortable if they can get that runner in from third in the form of Josh Johnson. One, two. Maxi checks on the runner. Again, Ashby is up and moving, and once again, Kyle Jackson fouls one back. One for four on the day, he struck out twice. Singled, came around, and scored back in the third inning. In fact, Kyle Jackson was the only run that they scored that wasn't on a home run this ball game. Maxi working hard to get this out. Ashby goes to second, and Kyle Jackson sends this out to deep center field, but Zach McDonald's underneath it. It looked as though Jackson might have gotten all of it, but quickly you realize that wasn't the case. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Red Hawks down a run. Here we go. Bottom of the ninth inning. Miami down a run. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love It Online here on Chatterbox Sports. Last time I'll plug it. Subscribe to the channel. Like the stream. And here we go. Zach McDonald facing off against the best closer in the MAC, Mitchell Scott. And first pitch swinging. McDonald. Fouls one right off of the face mask of Mickness. McDonald, one for three, has struck out twice. Slider runs away from McDonald. He lays off. Scott working with pace out on the rubber. Comes back with another breaking ball. This finds the strike zone. One, two. McDonald fouls it back. Scott has gone 13 consecutive appearances without giving up a run. The one, two is swung on and missed. McDonald can't catch up to the 88 mile an hour fastball. And there's one away. Harrison. And Scott has gone 21 innings without giving up a run. Harrison, he doubled his last trip up. Out to left center field, almost left the yard. He came around and scored back in the seventh inning. He's ahead in the count, 2-0. Gotta wonder if the red light is on and Hayden does signal something towards Tommy Harrison. 
The 2-0, taken for ball three, and Harrison is ahead in the count. You gotta wonder if he's not only got the red light for this pitch, but if he will be taking until he gets two strikes. Scott comes set, kicks, deals, finds the strike zone right over the middle of the plate. So a comeback pitch makes the count three and one and see if they challenge the freshman catcher once again. Wind blowing out to right field. Harrison gets a fastball over the plate but fouls it directly back. Wind picking up here in the ninth inning. The payoff pitch from Scott to Harrison. Harrison sends one out to right field. It's going down the line. It's going. Fair ball for the freshman. This game is knotted up at four all. Oh, my, folks. Mitchell Scott has gone 12 straight appearances, 20-plus innings consecutive without giving up an earned run. He's only given up an earned run in one game this season. And Miami ties it up here in the bottom of the ninth. That ball was murdered by Tommy Harrison. The only question was if it was going to stay fair, and it did by the hair on the chin of the baseball. Benji Brokman now steps up with a new ball game. One one to count to the starting right fielder, the leadoff man, Benji Brokman, and he lines it out to right center field. What do the Red Hawks have cooking now? A lot of speed on first base. A ball in the gap should win Miami the ball game. Cooper Weiss steps up. He's one for four with three strikeouts and a single. And Mitchell Scott's checking on Benji Brokmont. Brokmont on the season, 11 for 12 on stolen bases. It's on Benji's mind. It's on Mitchell Scott on the rubber's mind. It's on everyone at McKee Field's mind. Is Brokman going to take second base? Breaking ball misses up. David Novak is on deck. Rylan Zaborowski in the hole. Kyle Jackson guarding the third base line to prevent the extra base hit. And Mitchell Scott misses on the outside. Miami won game one, 12 to three. If they pull off this come from behind victory, they'll take the series over the leaders in the conference. Cooper Weiss, second on the team in home runs as well. He is slugging 621 on the season, an OPS over one. The junior from Fort Myers, Florida. And I brought this up his last time to the plates. He has had an RBI in each of the last six ball games. Hasn't had one here in game two. This is out to left center field. It's got a chance. But running out of room. The wind blowing in from left center field stifled the pop up from Cooper Weiss. As Josh Johnson 
with his hand on the outfield wall, comes in to make the play right at the 376 line. So it comes down to Ryland Zaborowski, the leader in home runs in the conference. One of the top home run bats in the entire nation. Two balls have already been sent for a ride here in this inning alone. I apologize, David Novak's at the plate. Zaborowski's in on deck circle. Novak, 280 on the season. Sacrifice fly his last trip up, but that won't do justice. Looking for his first ball hit of the ball game. Offers at the 1-0, and you can hear the crowd getting into it. A collective ooh and all with every pitch. Fully juiced up for what the home team has provided here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Brokemon running, it's a pitch out, throw on the money, and they will get Brokemon out at second base. So trying to get Brokemon in scoring position with two away, and they called it from a mile away. 4-4 our score, Tommy Harrison with the big fly that knotted the game up. We head to extras here in Oxford. I don't own an Apple Watch, but if I did, it would tell me I need to calm down. It's the top of the 10th inning here in Oxford. McKee Field at Hayden Park. 4-4 the score. Game two of a three-game series between Miami and Kent State. Zach Maxey back out for another inning of work. He'll face off against two, three, and four. Matthews. of the Golden Flashes lineup. Colin Matthews, Justin Mickness, and Aiden Longwell. Maxi has been sharp out of the pen, and this is why you, you bring a starter into the ball game. Can go deep if you need multiple innings. So Kit Egbert will not get attributed the loss. That's good stuff. And Whitman will not get the win. This game is tied up for the first time since the second inning. And I make the joke on these broadcasts, sometimes the scoreboard looks like binary code and, and has never been more true than today. Ones and zeros scattered across the ball game as we head to extras. Tommy Harrison. Sit one for a ride, which nodded the game up at four. Then Cooper Weiss, which according to Trackman, would have been gone on a day where the wind wasn't blowing in. Cooper Weiss thought he got all of it. Bat flipped, skipped down the line, and Josh Johnson was underneath it for the second outs. Maxey comes in the top of the 10th and retires Colin Matthews on strikes. Third time that Matthews has been put down on Justin strikes today. Mickness. And it's Justin Mickness. Mickness, two for three, and he's seeing the ball well. A home run, a single, and he lined out to first base his last time. If you remember, a shorter first baseman than Ryland Zaborowski would not have had a glove on the ball. 
This game started at 3.14, so still about two and a half hours into this. As Mickness goes down 0-2. I imagine we'll see Mitchell Scott in the bottom half of the inning, regardless of what Kent State does here. As Mickness grounds one over to Cooper Weiss, he fields it cleanly, throws it across the diamond over to Ryland Zaborowski for the second outs. Six to three put out, two away. Five, Aiden Longwell. Aiden Longwell, who came into this one on a 12 game hit streak, comes in 0 for 4. Many think will be the MAC player of the year when the season concludes. Coming up with two away. And Chase is the 1 0. Brings the count to one and one. Aiden Longwell flares one out to Benji Brokman, who tracks back against the wall. That ball just kept carrying. Brokman reaches up at the warning track and will have it for the third out. So a one, two, three, top half of the 10th. Four to four. We head to the bottom half here on Love and Honor Live. We head to the bottom of the 10th inning. And Miami has the teeth of their lineup to a 3-4-5. David Novak, Ryland Zaborowski, then Dylan Baker. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Mitchell Scott back out for another inning of work. First pitch to Novak fouled in the box. The longest Scott has gone this season is two and two-thirds innings. To get out of this 10th inning, he's going to need to go the longest he's gone all season long. He's at 37 pitches coming into this at-bat. Novak awaits the 1-1 from Scott. Misses up. Brings the count to two and one. Novak, 0 for two. Struck out, fielder's choice, hit by pitch, and a sacrifice fly. So he's ran the gamut. The one thing he hasn't done is gotten a hit. Count is evened up at two and two. Novak's best games last year were against the Golden Flashes. Would love to come up clutch here in the bottom of the 10th. Four home runs on the season for Novak. Two came last weekend against OU. Fallon straight back. Just missing that 88 mile an hour fastball. Mitchell Scott, not the most powering stuff. So good on the rubber. Novak out to deep left center field. Coming in is Matthews. 
He was playing out at the warning track, trying to keep the ball in front of him, and he did just that as Novak is retired for the first out. 15, Ryland Zaborowski. So Ryland Zaborowski steps in. And in a game where Miami is starting to loft the ball against Mitchell Scott, Zaborowski, who's one for four, leads the team in home run, steps in with one swing that can win the ball game. This is the deep right center field. Matthews is looking up. He's reaching up, and it's gone! Zaborowski with home run number 16 on the season wins the Red Hawks the ball game. And he's sprinting away, avoiding the Gatorade bath. The Red Hawks leave the field as they take the series from Kent State. Zaborowski with a home run in game one. A walk-off job here in the bottom of the 10th. They got the man they wanted up, and he delivered. Wow. Tommy Harrison with a game-tying monstrous home run in the bottom of the ninth. Then Ryland Zaborowski sent it to right center field. The wind blowing out to right center field. Got it in the jet stream and kissed it goodbye. Matthews scaled the wall, but two shorts. For that big fly. Miami takes game one, 12 to three. Takes game two, five to four. Zach Maxey with the win. Mitchell Scott with the loss. That does it from us out here in Oxford. An absolutely amazing day of baseball. Had so much fun. We'll be back tomorrow for the conclusion. Kent State looking to take one from Miami, while Miami is going to bring their brooms out and look for the sweep. That does it from us. For my producer, Sean Dixon, I'm Reed Mouse. I'll see you tomorrow here on Love and Honor Live on Chatterbox Sports.